In this video, I will show you how to create this drawing of a bedroom in one point perspective. To begin this drawing, I am going to start by drawing out the picture plane and establishing the position of the horizon line. Here in this example, the horizon line will be closer to the top of the picture plane around here. The next step is to place the vanishing point. We are drawing in one point perspective, so there will only be one vanishing point, which I will place on the center of this horizon line. It's now time to extend some lines from that vanishing point. These lines will represent the walls of the bedroom and also establish the floor and the ceiling. I draw some lines for the back wall of the bedroom, which forms a rectangle. And you'll notice that this is off center, meaning we see more of that wall on the left than that wall on the right. These are decisions you can make as an artist, so feel free to make changes if you want to. Now we have this empty room drawn out and we need to add some furniture. I start by drawing a vertical line down from that vanishing point and I add a horizontal line below which will be the bottom line for the end of the bed. I create a rectangle for the end of the bed and take some lines from each of its corners to the vanishing point. Then at the point where these lines cross the bottom of the back wall I draw in another rectangle. This rectangle will be the same size as that first one I had drawn, however it appears smaller due to foreshortening. Now I have drawn out a box that will be the bottom of a bed and I will now add a rectangle on top of this that is the same except it is slightly smaller. This will be the mattress for the bed. I also need to add a headboard to this bed and so I draw another rectangle at the end that is against the back wall. And then to finish this off, I add some pillars and another rectangle at the end of the bed. So now we have this bed drawn out and at either side of it, I am going to add some bedside cabinets. These will be some small boxes and so I start by drawing out their front planes first. And then I can take some lines from each corner to the vanishing point. And again, where these lines cross the bottom of that back wall is where the back of them will be. Here I add a line at the top of the box and then a line at the centre to represent two drawers. Here I draw a rug on the ground that the bed is sat on by drawing out its front edge, a horizontal line, and taking lines from the end of that back to the vanishing point. Now I will continue to add some furniture to this room. Next to this bedside cabinet on the left, I will add another set of drawers. Each of these boxes are boxes that are constructed at different sizes in one point perspective. Here I am drawing a large cupboard on the right and to do this I start by drawing out its side plane and then drawing in the lines for its front plane. Remember that when drawing in one point perspective the horizontal lines remain horizontal and the vertical lines remain vertical and it is only the lines receding into the distance that would converge to that one point. So I continue to add more furniture in this room. Here there is a desk that I am drawing out and again this is a box in one point perspective and as I construct this I am considering the surrounding lines that are the walls of the room. I am pushing these boxes that I draw for the furniture up to the walls and so their lines will stop as they meet the lines for the walls. That is why you will often see me draw through these boxes because it gives you a better idea of the volume you are working with. Now that most of the furniture has been drawn out, I will add two windows on this wall on the left. To do this, I draw out a rectangle in perspective, the top and bottom lines of this will converge to that vanishing point. Now because I want another window next to this at the same size, I will multiply its dimension forward. This technique is covered in my perspective drawing series in the episode titled Division and Duplication. This next window will, again, appear larger in size due to foreshortening. I add a window sill to these windows by drawing out a thin rectangular box at the bottom, and I also add some depth to these windows by taking a horizontal line from the back of them outwards and adding another side plane, essentially cutting into this wall. I'll finish off constructing this drawing by adding a seat for the desk. I don't want this to get too complicated so I will leave this as a box and I will also add a section of a box up front in the bottom right corner. 
So here is the underlying construction for this bedroom drawn in one point perspective. I suggest you outline all of this again and make it more permanent if you are happy with the results and you can also erase all of your construction lines. However you should still make note of where that vanishing point is as you might need to know later if you decide to draw something else. So now you can start to render your drawing. Here in this tutorial, and like all of my tutorials, I will continue to use pencil, but again you are the artist so you can decide what you want to do. Here I will place this stage into a time lapse, and you can see how I start to shade in the drawing. I start by shading in the walls, but I don't apply too much pressure as I only want to create a light shade. However, when I shade in the bed, I apply more pressure with the pencil to create a darker shade. Changing the pressure you apply with the pencil will allow you to create varying shades and changing the motion of the pencil as you shade in areas will create different textures. For example, here I shade in this ground, applying a lot of pressure, but I also create circular motions with the pencil to create an effect that is more suited for a carpet. You'll also find that I typically shade in areas having my lines go in one direction first and then I work over the same area with my lines going in a different direction which can be referred to as cross hatching except I don't leave any separating space between my lines. So here I shade in everything using this 2B pencil and then I decide to switch over to a much softer pencil as this will allow me to create some darker shades. I also outline this drawing again in some places to make sure everything is well defined. I make some small adjustments here and there and finally I have finished this drawing. So here is the final result, I hope you found this tutorial helpful, if you did then please leave a like and subscribe if you would like to see more. If you enjoyed the content I create then do consider becoming a patron on Patreon. You will gain access to exclusive tutorials, study documents, process papers, real-time drawing footage and more. Plus you will also be supporting me in a more personal way. Other than that, thank you for watching this video and I'll see you soon.